Now, what we want to do is map this to uh, like a relational database or a relational data model. And here we see from the example above, faculty and students, notice that the SSN is underlined to represent that it is the key of the relationship there. Now, <clears throat> when we go about doing this design, one of the things we're concerned about is structuring the uh, uh, database. And the term for structuring the data in terms of records and tables is called data normalization. Now, we do this to eliminate redundant data, better representation, flexibility, uh, as uh, reasons why we do this. Now, <clears throat> there are different levels of structure or different data normalization levels. There's first, second, third, voice code normal form, fourth, fifth, and domain key. The higher the number in terms of normal form, the more structure and more re uh, restrictions placed on the data. Now, I assume you've had this, but I'll just go rather quickly over this. First normal form assumes that all the uh, values are atomic, so this is a little example here is, is not first normal form because one prof professor matches with multiple students. To make it first normal form, we would do something like this. Essentially, you'd have one value per cell uh, box uh, in terms of a very informal definition. Second normal form has means we do not allow partial key dependencies. Okay, so for example, let's say there was a, a little library example and we have the date checked out. Well, we might have the copy number, the ISBN library ID, and card ID. So basically, the date checked out depends upon the card ID, library ID, ISBN, uh, and copy number. So if we had something like book title, book title only depends upon the ISBN, so that would be a partial key dependency. So you have your kind of informally, you've got your key attributes here, and you have a non-key attribute, and in this case, the non-key attribute only depends on one of the key attributes. We'll talk a lot more about that in the next couple of weeks. We scroll down, we come to third normal form, which has means a relation which is in third form, normal form does not allow transitive key dependencies. In this example here, what we see is the instructor name depends upon the instructor's social security number. Unfortunately, my Microsoft Word puts all these red lines as flagging for spelling, but it's not part of the key here. So we have a non-key attribute, in this case instructor SSN, uh, used to determine a, another non-key attribute. We'll get a lot more formal about that, but for now, think of third normal form does not allow transitive key dependencies. Okay. As we progress in this class, we'll be talking about things like functional dependencies, and I hope you've heard that term in your previous uh, undergraduate course. A couple other features here I wanted to mention is there's entity integrity, that is no attribute of primary key is null, so let's say you add a student record and you just can't, oh later I'll add the student ID, you have to do that right up front. Then there's a referential uh, integrity. So what that has to do with is that uh, you match a foreign key to a candidate key. There better be a candidate key in kind of the other table. Well, there's more details. You can read it there. Enterprise constraints is concerned with things like not allowing a student to register for more than 100 credits per semester, unless you're very smart. Uh, not allowing bank balances to go below zero dollars. And uh, <clears throat> with these relations and tables, we have the capability of creating SQL commands or relational algebra, algebra commands. In relational algebra, we have a variety of operations, including the select, which extracts out a horizontal subset, give me all students who are CS majors, project might be just give me the last name and first name of students from a student database, Join is the way is a method of taking uh, maybe two tables doesn't have to be two tables and finding uh, what they have in common like 
do a join between faculty and student where they have the same social security number, which would be a list of faculty that are also students at a university. Other operations I'll mention that you need to be familiar with include semi-join, outer join, intersection, difference, and division. Okay? Now that's in relational algebra. I assume you've had some exposure of converting relational algebra to, let's say, SQL, or to domain relational calculus, or to tuple relational calculus. Okay? Physical database design includes things like record storage. I hope you're familiar with the fixed length and variable length records. The notion of doing record blocking and allocating files to a disk. There are different types of files, accesses. There's random access or sequential access. And there's different uh, file index structures such as single level directory, multi-level directory, B trees, and B plus trees. So I hope you um, are very comfortable with these terms. If you're not, I highly recommend you go over these terms so that you can come into class and we can hit the ground running. Now, other things I want to mention include a concurrency control where you have multiple transactions. Good features of a transaction include atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Collectively, these properties make up what's called the acid properties. That's a good thing to have. Now, transactions may be either serial or non-serial, and sometimes non-serial transactions are serializable. And we'll, we'll talk some about that later in the semester. There are different types of concurrency, concurrency control, including locking, such as optimistic and pessimistic locking, along with timestamps. And it is possible for a given transaction to do things to abort it. If we want to make it permanent, we commit it or we could even roll back a transaction. Now I'll just talk really briefly about recovery. There's basically two operations I want you to be comfortable with. That's the redo and the undo operation. Okay. Now one other thing that I'll mention here is the database life cycle as you see in the notes. And <clears throat> Essentially, there's the system definition requirements. There's the notion we'll be focusing primarily on database design. There's the conceptual database design, which is ER design. We're also going to be looking at EER and UML designs. There's the choice of database. A lot of times companies made that decision. Then there's things like uh, from conceptual design, we'll do logical database design. We'll do those two before the midterm, and we'll talk about uh, things like how do you set up the corresponding normal forms, and then we'll have a relational algebra, may or may not have domain relational calculus, tuple relational calculus. After the midterm, we'll be talking about physical database design in terms of keys, blocking, index definitions, type definitions, and along the way, we'll do some transaction design. So the three main types of design we'll be looking at our conceptual design, there's a logical design, and the physical database design. Now, <clears throat> after that, we will, in terms of the uh, whole process, then there's the implementation, such as the SQL create, loading the data, or doing a data conversion. There might be need to do application conversion, test validation, operation of the system, then the monitoring, and the maintenance. So these are the various phases for the database, li database life cycle. Thanks a lot. We're going to stop here. Make sure you take the quizzes prior to coming to class and appreciate you watching the video. Bye-bye.